Okay, so I think I actually got it really close. What I did was I changed the low side on, no, the low side off resistor to 10 ohms. So now the low sides turn on with 25 ohms and off with 10. What I'll probably do is just um, eliminate that system on the low side and put probably a uh, 15 ohm resistor in for the low side at all times, just on and off, just a simple 15 volt or ohm resistor, sorry. And then the high side, I'm gonna keep using the diode because I had high side false turn on events before. So I'm gonna run a low resistor parallel to the diode so that, uh, no, um, the actual high resistor will be parallel to the diode and then a low resistor after in series with that so that when the diode helps it um, turn off faster with the lower resistance. Um, everything looks pretty good, so have a look at this. So you can actually see a little bit of stuff there on the scope, but it's not that bad. I'm going to try and capture it. It's a little tricky. a bit of it. It's a, uh, I might have to change the setting there, but I managed to capture a bit of it. So we can look at the high parts of the yellows here and see how bad it looks. Now remember this is only a 10 ohm turning off the low side now. It's definitely a lot better. There's basically, according to that, there's no ring, but that's because I zoomed out so far. Let's just double check that I uh, yeah, have it a long memory still, as you can see there. Um, let's just uh, get rid of that. Let's see what the overshoot looks like. That's what I'm kind of worried about. I can... <clears throat> let's see here. So we're hitting 78.4 volts with a, a source voltage of 65. That's a hell of a lot better. Last night I was hitting 98 volts. Over, so basically, um, you know, over 20 volts overshoot. Actually, over 30 volts overshoot. So it was really bad last night. If you look like this, you can see. It's, uh, let's just see. That's probably one of the worst ones right there. So <clears throat> you can definitely still see it does it. So what I'll probably do is try a 15 ohm resistor next. Um, just get that under control a little better. But I'm definitely getting there. It's definitely, I believe the answer is in how fast I turn off the low side uh, FETs because what happens is they uh, transition so fast that the diode, I believe it's the diode causing the uh, the ring there and it's actually this yellow trace here where you see it go up is where the current's trying to flow from the motor back to the controller when you shut the, the phase off. Let's have a look here. I just want to measure the, the switching time because as remember is about 178 nanoseconds before so let's switch that. This to here and I always measure the complete right to the very peak. Yeah, all of a sudden it's one microsecond. Yeah, I might not switch. I might not go too crazy. I'll probably try a 15 ohm resistor. Um, it might be close enough that I can call it good. I'm not sure. I'll get your guys' opinion on that anyway. Um, let's just look at the uh, this little bump there. It's probably actually the Miller Plateau. Pretty cool. I mean, that's the actual, uh, that's the high side turning on. So that's actually the 47.5 ohm resistor turning on that stage, which is obviously too much. I don't want to run it that high of a resistor. I was just trying to solve another problem. And, well, that wasn't the solution for it. So I'll switch that back down to probably a 15 ohm resistor. Cool.